what a stunning place. It's this sort of beauty that attracts people from around the world to islands in Greece. This one, Hios, which is about as far from Athens as you can get. In fact, it's just a few kilometers from Turkey. But for many decades, people living here have been forced to go to the mainland to find jobs because there simply haven't been the opportunities here. Now, thanks to the financial crisis, they're coming back and they're bringing with them their ideas that they hope will solve not just their personal crises, but Greece's as well. It's an exodus back to basics. Professionals, high achievers, dumped and burned in the economic firestorm, it's taken city jobs, now doing things they thought they'd never be doing, and even enjoying it. What if I said to you, you can have your old life back? What would you say to me? Uh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go, uh, go back. We've heard and seen a great deal of the protests, the unrest, the anger in Greece. This, though, is a story about very enterprising Greeks trying to turn that loss into a new way of life. You know, if they say that uh, what uh, doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. Alex Trihar and Nikos Gavalas thought their future was in the capital Athens. They're agricultural scientists, but their government contracts had dried up and city costs were crippling. So, what to do? A relocation back to Nikos's village on Hios and a niche agricultural enterprise funded by savings, family support and sheer determination. Their crisis-busting answer, snails, the eating kind. Everyone said, uh, you are definitely crazy, my girl. Now, they think that they were then stupid, <laughs> that they, they didn't decide the same. You must feel very proud of what you've done. I thought that uh, I, would, I wouldn't be so strong to survive all this crisis, but eventually I did it. Uh, yes, now after one and a half years, uh, yes, I think uh, it's a nice job. And business is booming. This year, they've already harvested eight tons of the gourmet gastropods destined for Italian and French plates. But as with any farming business, the work never stops. Before the next crop of baby snails arrives, stragglers must be rounded up, and the enormous greenhouse prepared as a kind of giant snail nursery. is uh, labor work it's very it was very difficult for me i'm a girl i was ready in athens i was uh, having uh, everything done for me and now i have uh, to to dig you know i feel like uh, have a, like scarlett o'hara the, the land is my strength I, I think that when you have the land you can feed uh, yourself you can produce anything you, you can be happy. And while this whole operation is now turning a profit, Nikos and Alex have plans. A new high-tech, high-volume snail farm, herb-flavoured snails, and even a line in snail slime cosmetics. I think the, my uh, try is to stop the crisis. M my <laughs> share of... <laughs> stopping the crisis here <laughs> so this is your own personal battle yes but yes. also for the country yes yes uh, i think everybody 
uh, should have uh, done the same because uh, we can expect nothing from the government they have uh, proven so many years that they are useless so we have to do it by ourselves Yanis Makadakis was also making a life in Athens as a successful writer and moonlighting as a maths teacher. Now he's making a life on the other side of Hios as a subsistence farmer, where his biggest calculations are how much food he must grow to get through the coming winter. Όποιος θέλει να ζήσει με τους παραδοσιακούς τρόπους και με τον να είναι πιο ασφαλής δεν στηρίζεται στο μισθό και στο πια και φτιάχνει αυτά τα προϊόντα, τα λάδια μας, την κυρακή μας, τη σούμα μας. Όλα τα παράγουμε πλήν από μακαρόνια και ρύζι, ας πούμε. Μπορούμε so, να τα έχουμε όλα. So this is your supermarket. Yeah, <laughs> my supermarket. <laughs> Yanis Makradakis will continue to write, but in this move to the small village of Volisos, he's learning how to farm. Taught by the older folk who never left and never forgot a simpler way of life. What would be your message to people in places like Athens that are feeling very desperate right now. Τι να πω; Να να πω αυτά που έχω καταλάβει εγώ. Έχω καταλάβει ότι το σύστημα αυτό μέσα στο οποίο έχουμε βάλει τις ζωές μας είναι πλαστό, ψεύτικο. Μας εκμεταλλεύεται όσο θέλει και μπορεί και μας έχει ανάγκη και μετά μας πετάει και μας ονομάζει άνεργους. What do you miss about the big city? Hmm. <laughs> no. Nothing. Yanis isn't wrong. Nothing is fast becoming the most accurate way to describe the appeal of the cities, like Greece's second largest, Thessaloniki, in the north of the country. On the surface, at least, it looks prosperous enough, but the nation's deep crisis is clearly reflected in the windows of hundreds of empty shops. Businesses gone bust. This is the sign of the times around here to let, but few takers. One frightening estimate has a thousand workers losing their jobs every day. Now more than a million Greeks are unemployed, a quarter of the workforce. If you're starting out, it's easy to feel helpless, facing a youth unemployment rate of 58%. And even if you're between your 30s and 50s, one in five are looking for a job. For some, there's little to do but hope and pray for a change of luck. We believe that uh, only God and uh, Virgin Mary can help us. This is considered the most miraculous icon of Axiom Esti. It's normally kept at the holy site of Mount Athos, but on rare occasions like a war, a natural or economic disaster, it's paraded in the hope a greater power will intervene. If you believe in miracles, and many here do, then this would be an ideal time for one for Greece, a very big one given all the problems. But some Greeks are not waiting for divine intervention, not even for the government to act. They've decided they have to do it for themselves. In the countryside near Thessaloniki, there are a hell of a lot of Greeks doing it for themselves. Up until a month ago, Kostas Bozos was a city banker. Now, 
he's unemployed. He's moved to his father's house in a village outside Thessaloniki, going back to his roots in search of a future. I'm going from a steady job, a permanent job, as we can say. And now, at the age of 50 that I am, it's, uh, I think, the right opportunity to become a farmer. Never ones to trust institutions, even in good times, Greeks always invested in real estate, often in and around their original family villages. For years, much of this land lay unused, unwanted, but now these plots are providing a lifeline for the dispossessed in the cities. I want to put in a little bit of 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 a little I like wine. I use. I like drinking good wine, and uh, for this, I like uh, the production of it. Ah, nae na chabi. Ah, po ta deleftea. Oriste. Stefanos Bozos worked hard to ensure his son had a good education and job prospects in the city. Now he must teach Kostas the secrets of the soil he learnt from his father ancient skills to overcome a very modern crisis. My father will help me on uh, the things he knows by father from brother. Thousands have taken the road back to farming in recent years. While the rest of the economy is in free fall, the farming sector is actually adding jobs. <laughs> But Costas knows that to really make it as a farmer, you also need to be an entrepreneur, and for that, he needs more than fatherly advice. Lucky for him, Thessaloniki is home to an extraordinary institution, the American Farm School. For over a hundred years, it's taught young farmers the latest in agricultural and marketing practices. Now it's fast becoming a retraining school for city slickers. They come from urban areas mainly. Perhaps they lost their job, they're unemployed, and they're trying to find their way out in order to survive. How many of your students that are successful do you think will return to the city as soon as the economy is better? None. Really? Yes. None and I put my signature down because they got to a new way of life. They saw that there is a good opportunity there to exploit and they're going to get stuck to that. Dr. Evangelos Virgos introduces me to one of his star entrepreneur pupils. Hi, Lena. Thank you very much for talking to us. It's a great crop of new babies. Yes. We have uh, uh, 230 babies here, yeah. wow. all, yeah. everywhere. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It is a boy. It is a little boy. Angelina Kirokopoulou and her husband used to run a machinery business. They got out just before the crash as farmers stopped paying their bills. But perhaps counterintuitively, they ignored the signs and became farmers themselves. Oh, That's the biggest udder I've ever seen. Yes, feeding three and this is lambing season. For two months, it becomes a 24 hour a day operation. Angelina does the day shift, while her husband is the night shepherd. And with a little help from CCTV, he can do the books and watch the flock at the same time. It's not glamorous, but it has one enormous advantage in troubled times. It pays. Now in Greece, there are no many jobs to have profit. Uh, my daughter, she works for uh, 400 uh, euros. 
for a month. 400 euros a month. 400 euros a month, 12 hours every day. Wow. This is... Uh, I can't say the word. Now it is hard and difficult, but uh, we have profit. We have profit. Until now, it's all been about selling the milk, but Angelina has grand plans to make her own cheese on site and so create jobs and a future for her children. Like many remaking their lives, she finds the new job far more rewarding than the old. What if I said to you, you can have your own life back? What would you say to me? Uh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, go back. You really love this sheep, don't yes, you? Yes, yes, yes. I like. Uh, uh, I think is the best uh, animal, the best, uh, the best animal in the world. Is and uh, he gives you uh, meat, uh, lamb, uh, milk, uh, uh, all all these things. You give him money. And a bit of love too. It, it is blessed. It is blessed. Yes, I love it very much. I love it. I love it, and I hope to go on uh, with this, with this, the farming. It is very quiet and uh, when I come here I'm alone on the mountain and just me, my herbs. I don't see anybody, I can't hear anybody, just the birds. A couple of hundred kilometers south of Thessaloniki, these rugged mountains near Mount Olympus offer Eleni Babuli not just inner peace, but a basic living. Gathering herbs here helped her make ends meet. She's held many city jobs over time, taught English, managed restaurants. Now, this is her office. For those people here, I don't think things have changed much because they were poor, they are still... <laughs> Eleni takes me to her favourite okay, mountain so village and reflects on a crisis that somehow seems far removed from a place like this. I talk to many Greeks who say, you know, first of all, the politicians, it's their fault. No, uh, okay, the politicians, but, uh, but the politicians, I think, uh, are people who we voted for. So if we people hadn't voted for them, they wouldn't be there to, to do all this uh, bad stuff they did. And, uh, so okay, a, so uh, are yes. Greeks, so are Greeks not taking responsibility for their own actions? Are they to blame themselves to some degree? Some Greeks do, some Greeks don't, as it happens all over the world. I don't think that uh, Greeks are something special. They are just people like everybody else and some people take responsibilities for what, what they do, some others don't. Already this is part of the answer, for some at least, including Eleni Babouli. In the port city of Volos, in a run-down abandoned municipal building, a new market, a new take on a very old idea, is flourishing. It's called Thames. Everyone here trades with everyone else. It's a form of barter with its own currency. Each trade is registered with a central database. The credit can then be used to buy something else. No cash, no tax. Is this part of the new Greece? Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, it's, it's part of the beginning of, uh, of uh, some um, different organization of people, you know, people uh, who try to take their lives in their own hands, don't expect from governments or, uh, or people in power to save them. Uh, and uh, uh, it's just a, a general di different attitude towards things. While this is useful, Eleni Babouli acknowledges its limitations the cash demands of the world outside these walls still beckon. Part of the answer, of course, you know that. It can't be the answer because Thames don't pay bills, don't pay petrol, uh, don't pay rent, uh, loans and so on. Uh, so it's not the answer. Nor is Greece's social security system. 
It's not surprising charity-run soup kitchens are busy. Unemployment benefits here are 360 euro a month, but there are conditions and a 12-month limit. And the size and duration of government benefits are being targeted in the latest austerity round. Old age pensions are also being cut. Of course, not everyone fleeing the cities are doing it willingly. Some are making a strategic retreat, taking refuge in family villages like Olympi back on the island of Hios just to get by, but hopeful one day they'll return to urban careers. Hey, Christoph. Hi, Philip. How are you? Thanks How for seeing you? me. Good, good, good. thank good. you. How are you? It's beautiful village you got here. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. How old is this uh, house? Well, it's probably 700 years old. This is your, uh, which is? This is my mother's house. Oh, hi and there. Hello. Hi. That's my mother. Hi, I'm Philip. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. But this isn't your house. So. No, we're gonna go, we're gonna go through my mother's because it's a castle village. Christos Rosakis always thought he'd return here one day. But when his business selling luxury cars in Athens collapsed, he and his wife felt they had no choice but to move back to Olympi. It feels great. It feels, you know, it's like, it takes you back. You know, you feel connected. You feel that you have roots here. And, and, and that's, that's uh, one of the good things. This is a friend of mine in Australia, Philip. Yeah, his Hello. wife. You know Hello. Hello. See him. So this, wow. is, this is a very old church. It's beautiful. Mm. Probably six to seven hundred years old. Legend has it Olympia is the place Homer was born, but Christos's personal odyssey back here involves a complex mix of emotions. Listen, it's, it's always a good thing to reunite with your roots and come with your roots, but the, the only difference is it's, I just wanted to be in my own terms. The only thing that makes me bitter is that somebody else decided that for me and I just, I'm, I was forced to come earlier. So, it's like a maze. It is. What he doesn't tell Mrs. Maria is that while he'd love to have a baby, he feels he can't afford one. A victim, he says, of corrupt politicians who've destroyed the economy and his best laid plans. Somebody else is kept inside if I'm going to have a child. You know how frustrating is that is? Because I want to have a kid with my wife and I don't have the means to support it. If I was a lazy bum, it will be righteous for me not to have a kid, but I work my ass off. Christos still is in the car business here on Hios, but no longer at the luxury end. His car wash is a crisis survival plan. Don't get me wrong, work is not a problem. You know, I would wash cars, I would even shine your shoes. I don't care what it's going to be. Just let me do it, and I will, I will pay you your taxes. Just let me make a living to support my wife and my kid. Because the, the, the spirit of... Back in the privacy of his own home, with just his wife Cassia and fellow newcomers Alex and Nikos, the raw emotion takes hold. I'm going to say something to you which is... I hope you understand it. My background and my blood is Greek. I come from people that they invented democracy. And I am, I'm wishing that I would have a dictator now. Can you understand how bitter that makes me? It's breaking my heart. Because actually if, because this is a small country, and if you read her, her history, you will understand probably if I lift your chair up and dug a meter down, you will see a bucket of blood, for sure. There were very brave people came from this country. 
and everybody, everybody are turning in their graves right now because of these assholes. And this is my country. I'm, we're not thieves. We're not people who doesn't pay the taxes and we're not lazy. We're not lazy. I'm sorry. The steady shift to the farms and villages appears to be an unstoppable force, fueled by desperation in the cities, inspired by hope for a better, less anxious life. Some will flourish, others may fail. But all have taken a bold decision, not to wait for the government or anyone else. Their futures are now in their hands.